Hi there, my name is Vijayan and I'm with Mewsoft's product management team. In this video, we will look at how AnyPoint Partner Manager can help automate B2B load, tender, and response workflow for transportation shipment execution. Setting the context for the demo, we have a fictional transportation company, Mythical Express, that has a well-defined APA architecture to orchestrate the load tender process with their transportation management system and connected with Slack to notify business users. Mythical serves hundreds of customers that leverage their services to move their freight. We will take five of these customers for this demo. The first two customers adds an orange tree, exchange X12 EDA standard documents through AS2 and HTTP protocols. Raintree uses a custom XML format, and Nile uses a custom JSON structure, and lastly, Dreamy Retailer uses a custom CSV data format. As a service provider eager to expand their business, Mythical has to support these different data formats in order to win the business from their customers and prospects. In this demo, we will see how AnyPoint Partner Manager helps Mythical Express to streamline these integrations. We will start by looking at what it takes to define some of the reusable building blocks as configurations in AnyPoint Partner Manager. As you navigate from AnyPoint Platform to Partner Manager, you are taken into your own organization's profile where you get to configure your identifiers, certificates, endpoints, and message types. Creating an endpoint, for example, is as easy as filling in a simple web form involving no coding. You just need to make some configuration selection depending on your unique requirements for your endpoints to be configured. When you create a HTTPS endpoint to receive data from your partners or backends, you have the option to manage those endpoints using AnyPoint's APA manager to apply policies and exposing those endpoints through your developer portal. In the context of the use case for Mythical, we have to send the translated inbound load tender JSON data to a process API. Let's check how that API is configured. You can configure the URL of the endpoint, credentials, authentication method, and other configurations in a simple UI. If you have a need to change some of these configurations at a later point in time, you can simply edit the configuration, make those changes, save, and activate them. As we saw in the context of the demo, Mythical Express has the need to support multiple internal and external document types. You can set up these message types, again, through easy configurations and no coding. Simply select the data standard, versions such as 4010, and message types such as 204 for load tenders. You can also optionally customize the EDI schema if your partner's EDI specification deviates from the standards. Let's now take a look at an already configured 204 message type in this environment. You will see that the message type has been defined to extract key pieces of information such as the shipment ID and the SCAC code using a simple data view transformation. This mapping could be extremely useful if you want to extract fields like shipment ID or invoice number or warehouse order number or any field that matters to your business and operational users from a transaction search and tracking standpoint. Here is an example of a map. On the left side, we have the 4010-204 load and message structure defined as the source of the mapping. And on the right side, we have a simple JSON output that gives us the attributes that we need to extract when processing data in real time. You can also get a real-time preview of the mapped data output. And as you can see here, you're getting the shipment ID and the carrier scan code. You simply need to attach that map to your message type definition. We're now looking at the definition of the source message type of outbound load tender response flow when the tender is accepted or declined in the TMS system. It's an internal JSON message coming out of the TMS. And in addition to the SCAC code, the shipment ID, we are also extracting the transportation order number and the accept decline code of the payload. The next configuration you will see in this page is the custom message attributes. If you want to define the fields that you want to extract and make it available for search for your operational users. Let's now look at how you can configure trading partners. From the partners page, you will see all of your configured partners in the environment. You can create new partners or a third party connection if you're configuring vans or third party logistics providers that manage the connection on behalf of multiple partners. Let's check out the profile of the partner apps. You can configure the basic information such as the partner's logos, contact information from their profile page, partner specific identifiers, certificates, and endpoints are configured in this page. The most important part here is the XL and EDIFAC settings for the partner, where you can configure 
different validation rules, duplicate control number checks, and other common EDI related uh, profile information. From the outbound settings, you can define the validation rules for messages you send to your partners and also the EDI delimiters with the ability to also set up hex codes as separator characters for your outbound EDI messages. All of these configurations can be changed on the fly without any code changes or deployments. Now that we understand how to create partners and the reusable configurations like message types and endpoints, let's look at how they all come together to create a logical message flow. From the message flows page, you can create inbound or outbound flows. The first step is to select the partner for whom we are creating the flow. And when inside the wizard, select the source endpoint through which we expect the data to come in. We are selecting an AS2 generic endpoint through which data from other customers are coming through. This customer doesn't have a direct AS2 connection, and instead send the data through a third party WAN connection, and we are selecting the WAN as the actual sender from a communication protocol standpoint. The next step is to select the source message type, and we are selecting the 4010-204 EDA road tender. And this customer needs 997 functional acknowledgements to be sent back, and it can be done by just checking the relevant configuration and selecting the endpoint to which the 997 data needs to be delivered to. The next step is to define the data transformation to convert the EDI-204 low tender data into Mythica's internal JSON tender format. The map needs to be built in data view, which we are seeing here as an example, with this 4010-204 message stru structure as the source on the left side and the JSON low tender data of Mythical Express on the right side as the target message type. It's a very simple and comprehensive graphical data mapping experience and DataWeave automatically takes care of all of your looping logics as you drag and drop your raw data elements and fields from left to right. Once the map is fully built and validated, you will then be importing it into your message flow configuration inside of Partner Manager. And the next step is to select the target message type, which in this case is the Mythical Express's internal low tender JSON message structure. We'll be simply selecting that as our target message type. The final step is to select the target endpoint to which the translated low tender JSON data needs to be sent to. And this is the process API that orchestrates the creation of the order in the TMS system. And the message flow is now complete and ready to be deployed. All right, let's now see what it takes to create a message flow to receive a non-EDI message structure like a JSON. Creating EDI, JSON, XML, or CSV-based message flows follow a consistent experience. For this message flow, we are selecting a HTTPS endpoint managed with API Manager as the receiving endpoint. And we are selecting the low tender JSON as the source message type coming from the partner. Then select the translation map to convert the incoming message to the desired target format, which can be a simple pass-through or involving complex transformation. Then select the target message type and the target endpoint which is the same low tender process API to which the translated EDA low tender was sent to. As we saw, the experience of creating message flows is consistent across message formats and protocols. All right, so far we've looked at how partners and message flows can be configured in Partner Manager. Let's now look at all of those in action by sending in low tender data in different formats from each of the five partners of Mythical Express. We'll start with the first partner, Alps, sending in an X12 204 low tender data. They just got the AS2 MDN back from Partner Manager. And in Slack, we just saw the first tender for a freight going from Phoenix to Oakland getting notified. The second customer, Orange Tree, is sending in a 204 low tender for a freight moving from Chicago to Minneapolis through a direct HTTPS call into Partner Manager. And we just got the Slack notification about the second tender for the shipment from Orange Tree. The third customer, Raintree, is now sending in a custom XML load tender data through the same generic HTTPS endpoint deployed from Partner Manager. And we got the Slack notification pretty much instantaneously. We have the fourth customer, Nile, that is sending in a custom JSON load tender data. And we got the Slack notification as this all happens in real time with no latency. The fifth and the last customer, Dreamy Retailer, is sending in a CS CSV load tender data for a freight from Oakland to Salmon Creek, Oregon. And really the message has been successfully processed by Partner Manager 
and we got the notification in Slack after the order is created in the transportation management system. We saw how Mythical was able to receive low tender data from customers in different formats and protocols and process them into a streamlined orchestration to create orders in their execution system. Let's now check how users can get visibility into the transaction activity within Partner Manager. All the transactions processed through Partner Manager can be seen in the activity page. Let's open the inbound X1204 low tender data we got from Alps. You can view the incoming raw EDA data payload and the translated JSON load tender that was sent to the process API to create the order in the TMS system. We configured the 204 message type to extract the shipment ID and the SCAC code, and you see them right here. You can copy the shipment ID and search for that or any other specific message attribute that you have defined in your message type to look at all the transactions associated to that attribute. Let's go to the 990 load tender response that was sent back to Al. Here we see the TMS order number and the tender accept or declined recent code in addition to shipment ID in the stack. You can view the JSON tender response payload that came from the TMS and the translated uh, 990 load tender response that was sent back to Alps. We will now look at the custom XML load tender that we got from Raintree. We can see the incoming XML data payload and the translated JSON load tender data that was sent to the process API. And just like how you were able to search for a particular shipment ID for an EDA load tender, you can do the same for data exchanged through other formats like XML or JSON as well. Let's now look at the CSV load tender that came from Dreamy Retailer. Here's the incoming data payload for the CSV and the translated JSON load tender data. And these B2B transactions process through Partner Manager and a set of process and system APIs. You can copy the transmission ID from Partner Manager and search for it in AnyPoint Monitoring's centralized log search to trace the transactions end to end all the way from the B2B transfer protocol level and through the downstream process and system APIs that integrate with your backend systems. As B2B workflows integrate with multiple trading partners and backend systems, there are a number of scenarios including data issues, mapping, failures, and system issues requiring transactions to be reprocessed. Partner Manager offers the ability to reprocess transactions from the UI as well as through API calls. We are now selecting two transactions that were previously processed and initiating a replay action. And as the replay gets completed, you will see those two replayed messages having indicators against them. And there are also two new child transmissions that got created as a result of the transaction reprocessing. And we now see two new messages about the load tender data being reprocessed for those two shipment IDs. And that brings us to the end of this demo. Thanks for watching.